Thank you for visiting Annie Electronics. In our previous video, in episode 6 we have explained APN junction diode in forward bias act as closed switch and in reversed bias it is behaved as an open switch. In this episode we will explore the switching characteristics of APN junction diode. But a question comes, why we need a PN junction diode as a switch while we can use a mechanical switch in circuits? Let's try to explain this query first. First of all, a mechanical switch can occupy extra spaces compared to a PN junction diode. Secondly, a mechanical switch has movable contacts. And most importantly, for a mechanical switch, it is very difficult to control the switching movement automatically. But if for a diode, we can control the switching functions very easily due to the unidirectional conduction characteristics of PN junction diode. A PN junction diode, while it is used as a switch, is also called a switching diode. Switching diode is a special kind of diode like Zener diode, they manufactured in different way. The P region is lightly doped and the N region is heavily doped. In comparison to a regular PN junction diode, a switching diode has a very short switching time and therefore has a very low junction capacitance. A switching diode that is used for high frequency applications where the general PN junction diode fails to work. The reason is as follows. During high frequency, the capacitive reaction for the barrier potential or the PN junction capacitance becomes extremely low. When it reaches a certain level, the switching performance of the diode is seriously impacted. A model of the diode circuit will show that the barrier capacitance is connected parallel to the diode. In the worst case scenario, the capacitive reactance is so small that the high frequency current passes through the junction capacitor and the diode is shot circuited. Hence, the diode won't function. The response of a system when it changes abruptly from its current or more precisely static position is termed transient. In a pulse waveform, edges corresponds to the transient. When there is a change in bias condition, a diode can exhibit a transient response. At this point, it is important to determine how effectively the switch will act when there is a sudden change. We now need to understand some key terms relating to switching diodes. During a bias change, the recovery time measures how long it takes for the diode to return to its steady state. Turn on time or forward recovery time is the time it takes to switch from reverse bias to forward bias or switching on state. A reverse recovery time or a storage time is called the interval from a forward bias condition to an off state or reverse bias condition. Soon, we will discover why it is called a storage time. The reverse recovery time is generally longer than the forward recovery time. Combined, these two times are considered switching time. In the event of a sudden change in forward bias to reverse bias voltage, a reverse current flow has been observed, rather than it turning off the current. And this may cause electrical oscillations and is known as ringing. Loss can be prevented by a small leakage current or ringing condition. Now let us understand the characteristics of switching PN junction diode. The forward bias causes the depletion region to shrink, and the majority carriers can move from one side to the other and become minorities on the other side. As the distance from the junction increases, the concentration of the minor carriers decreases exponentially. Look at the graph and the associated convention very carefully. A reverse saturation current occurs during reverse bias conditions when minority carriers in depletion regions contribute to the current flow. Therefore, minority carrier concentration is negligible at the junction and increases as it moves away from the junction. Let's imagine the switching diode initially being in the on state, then after some time, it suddenly changes to the OFF state. The graph illustrates the current situation. Observe at the graph we discussed just now, despite a sudden change from forward bias to reverse bias voltage, a reverse current flow has been observed, rather than it switching off. This may cause an electrical oscillation and is known as ringing. According to the graph, as the diode switches from on to OFF, the minority charge carrier concentration decreases and this time is also known as the storage time. The transition time is the amount of time it takes the diode to reach steady state after the storage time has been completed. 
Therefore, the combination of the storage time and the transition time is the reverse recovery time. We can see that the diode goes from an on state to an OFF state takes more time than when it goes from an off state to an on state. We now know why reverse recovery time is longer than forward recovery time. In addition to a switching diode, a normal junction PN junction diode is also shown in the graph. Here's a quick recap of the important points. Reverse recovery time is the time needed for the diode to change from forward bias to reverse bias. Forward recovery time refers to the time it takes for the diode to change from reverse bias to forward bias. The amount of time during which the diode remains in the conduction state, even if it is reverse biased is known as storage time. The time required for the device to return to a stable state of reverse bias, i.e. back to non-conduction, is called the transition time. Feel free to ask questions in the comments section. We will answer them as best we can. Don't forget to follow us on other social media platforms for queries and updates. Subscribing to Ani Electronics will ensure that you never miss a video update. Thank you.